What is this? <gasps> this is crazy. Proverbidiums. Oh, I get it. They're all common sayings. Let me see what I can recognize. You are what you eat, and you'd forget your head if it wasn't screwed on. <laughs> the rat race. I heard it through the grapevine. Oh, I have heard it through the grapevine. Ooh. You can't have your cake and eat it too. And hungry enough to eat a horse. <laughs> Say, I'm pretty good at this. Don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Oh, ooh. <clears throat> I, hmm. A frog in the throat. Ah, uh, kind of a frog in my throat. Cat got your tongue? Too many cooks spoil the broth. Many hands make light work. Beggars can't be choosers. You can't take it with you. Dead men tell no tales. When viewing the work of T.E. Breitenbach, one is first struck by the impressive technical realism and brilliant colors, and next by the bizarre and bewildering array of characters performing all sorts of strange ado. These are his proverbidiums, large-scale collections of hundreds of everyday sayings, proverbs, and cliches, pictured literally and humorously. Like all true art, the paintings draw us into their inner world. But once there, Breitenbach's creations hold on to you, like an addiction. You are reluctant to leave, or you keep returning, determined to savor another laugh or solve another riddle. What is it that drives an artist to create? Insanity. It's possible in this case. Why is their passion so intense and consuming? Renaissance kind of guy. As a child, Breitenbach showed little interest in becoming a painter. He collected insects, rocks, shells, and curiosities, and kept a shelf in the basement, which he called his museum. His family moved to the country in upstate New York in 1960, and together they built their family home. In 1961, the artist's father opened an architectural practice in the home, for which the artist built models and learned enough about architectural drawing to be a full-time draftsman the summer before leaving for college. Breitenbach also had a strong interest in music. His parents performed in community theater, and there were plenty of sing-alongs at home. His mother taught him to play several musical instruments, and he composed music, even winning first prize in a school talent show. 
Breitenbach developed a fascination with mechanical things, which led him during his high school years to build several grandfather clocks, music boxes, and musical instruments. He learned to paint while decorating the dials and cabinets. After leaving my idyllic childhood to attend college, and this was during the height of the Vietnam protests, I felt disturbed by mankind's seemingly irrational and violent bent. So I turned to painting to address this. Breitenbach's early works were dark moral allegories, warnings, observations, and questions. For example, in his Mankind Ironically Disguised as Ruins, we see a child in the rock forms pointing an accusing finger at the adults. In this work titled Much Ruins, the observer in the picture is blind to his possibly deadly future. In his painting Noah's Ark, the boat is riddled with holes, which begs the question, will we be saved a second time, or are we even worth saving? His shocking The Crucifixion reflects a violent act of the sort often heard on the news. His painting The Temptation of Saint Anybody examines the material pleasures that frequently distract us from using our intelligence and doing the right thing. The longer you look at each of these powerful works, the more meaning emerges from the rocks and trees. The artist carefully constructs his stories using archetypal symbols and other content, so the viewer will experience the world through his eyes. While a sophomore at the University of Notre Dame, Breitenbach had a brush with the famous. He contacted Jim Morrison of The Doors and offered to paint an album cover. Morrison replied favorably and sent the artist signed private editions of his poetry and suggestions for the painting. After the artist captured Morrison's sometimes hellish vision, Morrison said he wanted to use the artwork on an album of poetry. But Morrison died shortly thereafter, and his intentions were unknown to the producers when the album An American Prayer was released seven years later. Breitenbach is best known for his painting Proverbidiums, which illustrates over 300 proverbs, cliches, and common sayings. The artist spent two years creating this picture. He completed it at age 24. This humor-filled picture represents a distinct departure from the artist's early dark works, though social commentary is still present in the painting. For example, in the sewer pipe running directly into the river, and the white female versus black male illustrating, I've got a bone to pick with you, a reference to the women's and civil rights movements. Furthermore, the artist believes that our words and the images they suggest reveal a lot about humankind. They are saturated with our wisdom, experience, observations, and follies. Therefore, the artist did not shy away from placing wise expressions such as, don't count your chickens before they hatch, and don't put all your eggs in one basket, alongside crude ones like, flat as a board, and knockers. When Proverbidiums was finished, the painting began to draw crowds wherever it was exhibited. In 1980, at the advice of a friend, the artist began publishing posters of this and other of his works. These became immensely popular both for their entertainment value and for use in education. Hundreds of thousands of posters have since been sold along with other licensed products. The posters have traveled to over 100 countries through second language teaching programs. They have appeared on the sets of well-known television shows, inspired a song, and they have been counterfeited several times. Once Breitenbach has his inspiration for a new painting and any necessary research has been finished, the artist creates a small thumbnail drawing for the basic painting, the stage, if you will. He then asks friends, family, and strangers to pose for the figures in his paintings, which he photographs. In his early years, he would sketch the landscape on a full-size cartoon, 
Draw the individual figures on small scraps of paper and attach them to the master drawing, shifting them around as needed until he was satisfied with the composition. Today he arranges his compositions on computer using Photoshop. In the meanwhile, he carefully prepares a traditional gesso panel made of cradled wood carefully surfaced with chalk and hide glue. His paintings are constructed to last for centuries. The composition is next transferred to tracing paper, sketched on both sides, and then transferred to the panel by rubbing the lines. He paints using traditional Flemish oil glazes, a meticulous process. Light penetrates the transparent paint layers, striking the pure white gesso panels and reflecting back at the viewer, creating a luminous effect. Breitenbach does not allow brush strokes to show. He wants nothing to spoil the illusion that the viewer can just step into his paintings. He often reinforces this feeling by using strong elements of perspective. For example, a highway drawing you in. Complex paintings, such as Breitenbach's larger works, are built upon an internal geometry. The elements within the scene must be carefully arranged to keep the viewer's attention swirling around the world of the artwork. Nothing must throw their eye out of the painting, such as a tree branch jutting out toward a corner. After completing Proverbidiums, Breitenbach started building by hand his own castle in the Helderberg Mountains of New York. He had been planning this for some time. He left college a year early for Italy after becoming the youngest person to win a Rome Prize Fellowship. He was quite taken by the castles he encountered during his travels. The first stage of construction was an octagon, inspired by the Victorian book The Octagon House by Orson Fowler, which promoted the advantages of a compact design. It had a tower attached containing a spiral staircase. The artist quarried stones, some as long as 12 feet, from a nearby creek. He treated the stonework as art, mixing together in pleasing fashion a palette of bluestone, fossil rock, and cobblestone. For the interiors, the artist used salvaged hand-hewn beams and siding for ceilings and doors. He cut oak trees to use for cabinetry and additional furnishings. He also built a blacksmith shop in order to forge iron hardware. He made leaded glass windows. And he painted a fresco in the main hall. A decade later, he added a studio wing with a wood shop and gallery space in the basement. Breitenbach has created a trust in order to leave the castle and his artwork behind as a future museum. Breitenbach so enjoyed the creation of Proverbidiums that he went on to create a dozen more such collections of sayings, four with the Proverbidium's trade name and others dealing with specific themes. Let's have some fun while we explore these paintings, just as the artist intended. Proverbidium's two. A skeleton crew, and you'll have your head handed to you. It's a jungle out there. Spreading oneself thin. Catchpenny. Rub-a-dub-dub, -dub, three men in a tub. Little Bo Peep. Hansel and Gretel. House Calls. Home on the Range. Halfway House. Nursing Home and Homesick. Computer ease. 
Downtime. Bitmap. Sport tease. Choking up on the bat. The bullpen. Pool shark. Shakespeareans. What light through yonder window breaks? Out damned spot. To be or not to be? That is the question. Eats. Plum tuckered out. Salmon moose. And key lime pie. Things of the garden. Jack in the pulpit. Princess Pine. Whorehound. Ultimate proverb idioms. Putting two and two together. An open and shut case. Under the table and let sleeping dogs lie. A picture of health. Freudian slip and secondhand smoke. Car sick. Nose job. Proverb idioms four. Who missed the boat? Monkey business. Beans, beans. The more you eat, the more you toot. Do I look like I just fell off a turnip truck? The artist continued to paint allegorical works, too. But as his career progressed, and after his marriage and the birth of his children, his paintings became more optimistic and colorful. They tend to focus on the good in life. Music. Love. Humor. Poetic reminiscing. And philosophical musings. In 1985, Breitenbach began writing a fantasy novel titled Grumperar's The New Creatures, An Adventure and Field Guide. He based it on a childhood passion, pouring through field guides to study nature. He drew nearly 2,000 creatures for the project, then classified his favorites into symbolic families, representing the human emotions, and arranged them like a field guide, with common and Latin names and descriptions. This is the book's appendix. The new creatures are said to be those fleeting images we sometimes see out of the corner of an eye, but which vanish when we turn to look at them directly. In the story, the artist recreates that experience of wonder and awe which we possessed as children, as his character explores and discovers things for the first time. The easy-to-follow story is layered with allegory, autobiography, philosophical musings, and imaginative answers to many of life's imponderables like how sneakers get holes, where houseflies go in winter, and how mountains talk to one another. Yes, mountains do talk constantly, but you must understand that mountains live in a different time frame than we do. Their lives span hundreds of millions of years, and it takes perhaps a year or two for them to utter a single word, though it seems like a second to another mountain. It was not easy for me to see the new creatures at first nor to trust that I was not dreaming them. According to Housefly belief, sometime around late October, the great Velox appears, pulling ten tiny cannons to free the flies from their household bondage. 
the flies spend most of their day watching out the windows for him. Breitenbach added to the book over the years, finally publishing it as an e-book. He also wrote an answer and trivia book for his 13 puzzle paintings and an online painting course. I feel an inspiration coming on. Hieronymus, perhaps I made a mistake falling in love with you. Anna, what do you want me to say? <laughs> That's nonsense! <laughs> Hieronymus Bosch is accused of heresy. Heresy? Oh, yes. Hieronymus, you live so much in your imagination that little else seems to matter to you. Don't you understand? You're not real! How can you say that? Hieronymus, <laughs> Sophie's in trouble. There's that mad artist I fell in love with. I want him back. Don't miss Hieronymus, the musical tale of an artist and his too large imagination. One day a friend of mine gave me tickets to a premiere of a new musical and I was so impressed by the creativity of it that I knew right then and there that I wanted to try this. This would be the ultimate challenge. Close your eyes, it's no surprise You can do it with imagination if you want Through the medium of theater, Breitenbach was able to meld together the many art forms he had practiced over the years into an inspiring and uplifting story that he was uniquely qualified to tell. Yo-ho, the sun comes out, the sky turns blue, this much is true. But if I may suggest the rest, my dear, is up to you. Breitenbach's first work, Hieronymus, A Musical Fantasy, features artist Hieronymus Bosch, who is so deeply immersed in his imagination that the creatures he invents escape from his paintings and they live in his house, where they bring him both social joy and utter havoc. He attempts to hide them from Anna, the woman he is courting, and from a jealous competitor intent on ruining him. This is the devil's work. Hieronymus' we'll passion for his art often leads him to neglect the people and things he ought to care about, and all are left to do some serious soul searching. What about me? In 2016, Breitenbach produced a large staging of his musical for public television. He notes that it was liberating to leave the solitude of his art studio to work with the many devoted, hard-working participants he came to call his theatrical family. He was also humbled to witness an audience laughing, crying, and clapping over a work of art he created. Hieronymus A Musical Fantasy is a fun and entertaining family show for all ages. Because you took my heart, I have a tender spot right here. Breitenbach wrote a second musical titled Little Black Boxes, the story of a stranger who comes to town and hands out a dozen little black boxes, telling people not to open them or they will find nothing inside. But if they are patient, the boxes will bring them or someone they know a great treasure. These little black boxes I keep in a bag, the plainest black boxes a man ever had. I wonder what treasures each box may contain. I'm hopelessly curious. It's hard to refrain. Lives are changed for the better, or worse, as this unusual situation is dealt with. Along the way, lost loves are found, mysteries uncovered, murderers and crooks are routed out, and there is, perhaps, a miracle or two. And so, all good stories must come to an end, including this one. As the sun sets over the castle and the Sandman visits its inhabitants and all of you, may you have wildly creative adventures in Slumberland and in your daily lives, too. Imagination is a state of mind, viewing everything we encounter, even the smallest things, through the eyes of a child. Wow looking at common things in new ways, seeing the extraordinary in the ordinary, and living with a sense of wonder and awe of things.